Honestly, words cannot describe how sick I am of cleaning. I've got one more push. Got a big box full of stuff. We got the wheels and tires and the fenders. And uh, after that, I am pretty much done cleaning for the whole project. And uh, that's going to be a celebratory beer, I can guarantee you that. So, fast forward, or maybe I won't even show it because it's boring as hell. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to spend the next three hours cleaning crap. That right there represents the very last bit of cleaning I had to do. Everything's spotless and shiny and I solemnly vow that I will not do any more cleaning for the next six months. Gearing is really important in a moped. It determines how fast you are off the line, it determines your top speed, and since I'm Putting a bunch of power into this thing and putting a variator on it, which means basically changing the transmission, I really need to start thinking about the gearing of this thing before I start the rebuild. So that means it's time for a lesson. calculate a gear ratio by counting the number of teeth on your front sprocket and the number of teeth on your rear sprocket. So say you have 10 teeth on your front sprocket and 40 teeth on your rear sprocket, 10 divided by 40 gives you a 0.25 gear ratio. In general, the lower the gear ratio, say you have a 0.20, means you'll be faster off the line. Whereas a higher gear ratio, say a 0.40, means you're going to get a, top a higher top speed at the same RPM because the back sprocket will need to travel a lot farther for every one rotation of the front sprocket. Farther travel means it's moving faster, means your wheels moving faster, means you're going faster. The original Motobacons out of the factory for the Dymo B clutches the 20 mile per hour version had an 11 front sprocket 48 rear sprocket for a .229 gear ratio. The 30 mile per hour version had a 1344 for a .295 gear ratio. Since this is higher, it goes faster. Since this is lower, it doesn't go as fast, but it might be a little bit quicker off the line because if the engine power was exactly the same. The variated mopeds all came with an 1154 or a .20 gear ratio. Pretty low for while you're sitting at idle and you're getting ready to take off the line. But as that moped accelerated, the variator would kick in and this gear ratio would increase. You can think of it as this 11 increasing, getting bigger, um, even though it's pulley driven, so that's not exactly how it works, but it gets bigger by 40%. So that 0.20 gear ratio became a 0.28 gear ratio when you hit speed, I think over 18 miles per hour. My bike, which as I said before, I think is the 25 mile per hour version, came with an 1144, right in the middle there, a .25 gear ratio. What's that going to mean when I put a variator on it? If I leave the original gears, 1144.25 gear ratio, when I variate that thing, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to grow by about 40% and give me a 0.35 gear ratio at speed. That's a little high. And it means the bike's gonna book, but it also means it's gonna have to work really hard to get there. Luckily, I'm overcoming some of that by putting a 74cc kit on there. A lot of people, when they change to variate it, from non-variator to variator, will change that back sprocket, either to the original 54 that came on the variated mopeds,
or to something else a 50 or a 48. Um, they sell them in all sizes and they're relatively simple to switch out. For me, I think I'm going to leave this as is for now. When I rebuild this, I'm going to go ahead and build it with the 1144. Then I'm going to run it and I'm going to see if it behaves the way I want it to behave. If it doesn't behave the way I want it to behave, I'll come back and put one of these other back sprockets on. They're pretty easy to flip out, but of course I'll need to change the chain as well. So, for right now I'm rebuilding using the original gear ratio. We're going to test it out and then if I have to, I'll go back and I'll change it. Let the rebuild begin. Just taking this opportunity to clean the brakes up, grease the hubs, check the bearings. Standard stuff, it all looks really good. There's tons of meat left on these brakes. And uh, they look pretty darn good. Take your time on that. The front wheel was grumbling and not very smooth, so I decided to take it apart and have a look. The f was that? Of course, I lost the bearings a few times. Those are slippery little bitches. Alright, after I readjusted the camera, I forgot to hit record, so I did a bunch of stuff. Um, I cleaned out the casings for the bearings. Um, I've got the bearings cleaning up here in a in a bunch of um, a bunch of brake cleaner and uh, and the most important thing I did is I replaced the uh, drive on uh, the, sp the speedo drive on the front axle um, for my new sweet speedometer um, it's a fringe moped, so I figured it should have kilometers per hour. We're going all continental here. Um, anyway, I needed to replace the, the Speedo drive, so I did that. It was relatively easy. I just pulled off the nut, shoved this on, put the nut back on. And, um, and now I'm getting ready to pack the bearing. Uh, I've got... Um, all of my balls, 11 balls on each side. Uh, I've lost them three times, but I found them each time I lost one. So, uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and repack this, uh, this wheel.
Whoever said less is more wasn't talking about repacking bearings. You need to slather the grease on here. There we go. Got that one packed up. I'm taping this side up so they don't fall out while I'm doing the other side. Repacked, ready to go. Now you gotta just make sure you don't have any grease here in the brake shoe area. And this, don't want anything fouling those brakes. Here's my problem. I love the way that looks with no front fender. It's all 50s racer style. I dig it. But I also don't like grime and gunk flying directly into my face. Yeah, I don't know. And do I like the way that looks though. I guess I'll put it on. Only because I want this bike to be comfortable and I plan on riding it a lot in long distances. I'll put it on. While I've been constantly impressed with the engineering of this thing, the front fender is an exception. It takes about 30 minutes to fit it on and it's truly a pain in the ass. Alright, I've reached the point in the build where all the big stuff is on and now I have to start worrying about minutia. I think I'm going to go through and replace most, if not all, of the cables. They're cracked and split and, um, and they're not going to work with the new carb and stuff. And um, It's just good to have nice fresh new cables on there for peace of mind. I also have to do some wiring, but I'm going to wait until I have the engine on to do the wiring, just so I know the lengths to cut. Um, but for right now I'm going to do the cabling and I have a bunch of cables but none of them are the right size. Most of them have some fairly compatible NARPs on them. Um, but I bought on Amazon, I bought this tool with a bunch of end caps so I can set the length. This looked a lot more impressive in the picture on Amazon than it did when it showed up. So I'm not 100% sure how well this is going to work but I'll find out. Actually, the, the rear brake cable is the best cable on the whole bike. That's probably the one I'm not going to change. Both, both brake cables look good. 
all the other ones need to go. This guy is the choke cable, which I need to replace anyway, but, um, but it's in a bad way, so. Thinking this, I think I do have to have the engine on for the cables just so I can see how long the throttle and choke and decomp cables need to be and get those perfect. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mount this engine. But before I do that, um, this is the hook uh, that goes on the the spring for the um, for the engine. And since this was a non variated moped. It's, it's only got a little channel here, whereas a variated moped would have this whole part cut out so that the moped could, could pull all the way back. Alright, I found some pictures in the, in the manual. You can see this one. And basically it just looks like this continues to go straight across. clean it up a little bit on the grinder but that's pretty much it looking good. Put the carb on so I can start figuring out cables. I have this little micro bendy. It helps, it helps the carb fit under so you can vary and everything. But I'm going to put it on and push it to see if I can make sure I can vary it all the way. Look at that. Alright, I'm doing it for real. <laughs> 